Well, <clears throat> hello everyone. How are we doing this rainy, horrible day? Uh, I hope you've got some um, good times to look forward to as the Bath begins to come back uh, to business life, come back to social life, and come back to charitable life, which is what we're going to be talking about today. My name is Greg, and I'm very proud to present this Bath Life Business Club. In the echo chamber of social media, where people can go from naught to furious at the drop of a tweet and even legitimise and meanness and prejudice, that which was lurking in the shadows leaps out on us daily. That's commonplace. We know how bad things can be promoted, but exactly the same applies to good things. The good that people do and charities and companies can as readily be amplified, and that's partly what we're going to be talking about today. It's a similar process, but moving towards the light rather than moving towards the dark, towards the mainstream. Giving to charity was an adjunct some years back, at best for companies, with a charity committee or maybe a decision made on the whim of a boss that became a formal CR, CSR policy, corporate social responsibility, perhaps rather cynically viewed as a box ticking exercise, who knows? But at least in both cases, money was channeled for charities. In recent times, this process of thinking, of giving about social responsibility of companies has become much, much more central to company strategies, an outward indicator of internal values. That at least is the premise behind this morning's discussion. It's ever more timely given the pandemic when the need for charities has, been, has never been greater, their teams have never been so overstretched and their funding has never been more precarious. These are testing times for all businesses and charities, but however testing they are, let us not forget our common humanity, our responsibility to help where we can to support the needs of others in our city via our charities. So updates, talking of charities and businesses, this thing isn't wholly just put together, you know, we're, we're running a very special fundraising evening this Thursday, July 30th for Bulls Aid. I hope you know about it already. It's a charity, comedy, food and drink, music, quirky celebration, including some top names and even possibly the odd bit of bulls and raffle prizes and dressing up. We've got 12 comics, courtesy of our very good friends at Belly Laughs, including one of the biggest names in Bath who we can't name just yet, uh, but you will know uh, this person on a national basis is contributing to Bulls Aid on Thursday night. We have some key people who are connected with Bath, also extolling the virtues of this city. Uh, we have some peculiar music, wonderful music, and there's a particular song which has been reworked, which many Bath people are joining in uh, in order to help celebrate this city, but also providing a means of fundraising. You can fundraise, you can contribute by uh, donating in advance. You can watch for free, but you can donate in advance if you wish. We will have text donating during it as well. Please look out for bathbulls.com and our social media feeds for all information. 7.30 Thursday, an hour and a half, our city will come together to support our charities at a time when they most need it. It's headline sponsored by Bruin Dolphin. And of course, Bruin are one of our, our speakers today and we'll come on to that process and that rationale shortly. And it's backed by dozens upon dozens of Bath businesses who know that Bath's charities really, really, like really, need funds in these times. Please talk to us in the remaining days about how you can get involved. There's loads of time yet, honest. It's virtual, we can do it right up to the last minute. I didn't say that, but we can. Please check the site for ways you can donate, sponsor, contribute. Imagine what you'd spend during the bull ordinarily, perhaps donate some of that on the day. Watch, enjoy, donate. Differently, rather differently, do look out for our next Bath Life Business Surgeries. We've got two coming up. These are showcases essentially for key business areas which will add benefit to Bath businesses, key insights about professional services. Uh, they are with Univigil on August the 3rd and Ojo Solutions on August 17th. Additionally, we have uh, our first ever across our four cities, Media Clash publishes, and run, publishes magazines and runs events in four cities of Bath, Bristol, Cardiff and Exeter. And on March 6th at 11 a.m., we're having the group worldwide CEO of Marsh uh, a, in conversation. And that will be a, a fascinating experience with a very top level company who have been extremely good supporting local businesses, businesses in those four cities, including, of course, Bath. So please look out for that. 
And on our calendar, there's something very important happening on August the 28th, which is the return to robust rude health of something called Bath Life. We have been so touched with the support we've had during this, this interregnum. We know we have a part to play and we are determined to play that part to the absolute fullest. Please talk to us about how you can be involved editorially and in advertising in that Bath, Bath Life issue out on August 28th and of course all other issues fortnightly thereafter, celebrating and chronicling this city issue in and issue out. So to our Bath Life Business Club today, sponsored once more by our friends at Mojo Stewart. This time we have a session on the social responsibility of businesses. We'll be exploring our, a number of themes with our panel of speakers, and please do ask any questions by the Q&A button below. We'll be hearing from a combination about, of businesses and charities about the intersection between companies doing good and charities needing support from businesses. For those who've seen these business clubs before, we have a change of format this time. Rather than running mini interviews with each individually, we'll be talking to everyone together as a panel. Communality and together togetherness somehow feels appropriate, and that's why we're changing the format for this time around. So if I could ask our magnificent seven panelists to join us uh, all together, please, and we'll start. Um, I'll briefly introduce them. They are Richard Barrington from Bruin Dolphin, Tamsin Eastwood, Stone King, Philippa Watson, Dorothy House, Martin Buckland from DataSharp, Rosie Phillips, DHI, Evan Weinberg from TrueSpeed, and Penny McKissick from Southside. A combination, as you can see, of businesses and charities. Good morning, all. Please unmute morning. me. Morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Well, um, this will be a, a fun session where I know you're not going to all talk over each other, but um, <laughs> we'll keep it go. Um, it, it is important, and in some respects, we sort of don't mind the talking over it because it is about companies and charities coming together. So let's just ask. Um, a question, perhaps uh, I'll, I'll kick off with Bruin, Bruin Dolphin. Um, I'll come on to the bull in a moment. I will not miss the opportunity to bang a drum for the bull. But I want to ask you first, and then our other businesses, what does social responsibility actually mean to your company? Richard. Uh, good morning. Thank, thanks for inviting us to this session. Um, uh, as a, a lot of you will, will probably know, Bruin Dolphin, but um, our previous manor station was, was Epoch Wealth Management. So we'd, we'd been operating in Bath for a long time and then uh, last year became part of the, the Bruin Dolphin um, structure. But social responsibility has been pretty key to us for the last sort of 10 years or so in some shape or form. And I think we've sort of refined our, um, our feelings around social responsibility. And I suppose the, the, the easiest way to, to, to cover it is we feel it's the responsibility to a much wider group of people and society and not just shareholders. Um, I think when you set up a commercial business, your, your, your first thought is about, well, who, you know, who's taking the risk on this business? Who's setting it up? You've got to look after your shareholders. Um, and I think that's, that's pretty crucial to the, to the big companies that have formal shareholders on the FTSE 250 in our case. Um, but for us, the social responsibility is, is that wider group of stakeholders recognizing our responsibility to the shareholders but also recognizing our responsibility to our staff uh, to our local charities to our local communities so it's just that that much more sort of broad sense of purpose and it's not just about the about the buck martin um do, do you uh, do you broadly concur and perhaps reflect on on what business might have looked like um 10 20 years back was it the same sense of social responsibility um Good question. I mean, we run a smaller business. There's only about 15 of us. Um, we're technically classed as a sole trader, so I, I own all of it, although we're in the middle of transformation to potentially LLP or limited because I, I want to have a succession plan. So for me, it's all about longevity. This is my 26th year in business. Um, before that, I was an employee for about 10 years uh, plus. I'll buy more than that. What am I talking about? But um, yeah, so for me, it's been there at the beginning, really. When you first start out in business, you're worried about making a, pe a penny. Then you start realizing you want to look after your security. Then you start realizing you need people. But when it gets to a point we have got inertia, momentum, you realize everything changes. You don't think about CSR and the environment when you're struggling to make a living. But when you start becoming more established, there's more to it than just making money. There's more to it than you know making a profit. And what I've gleaned from bitter experience probably is a lot of our competitors and a lot of business in general has a lot of tokenism is what I've come up with, where they want to be seen to be ethical. They want to be seen to be giving back. They want to be seen to do some good, but really all they care about is the bottom line. So we've done a, 
a, a bit further than that, really. And I've tried to summarize, for me, it has to be, first of all, looking after my staff. If I don't look after them, the business is, is not a business. Then extending that out to us immediately, it's the customer base. If we don't look after them, we haven't got a business. They don't repeat with us. They don't refer. And then if you can afford to, and all, a lot of it is based upon can you afford to do it or not, is, is the environment. Uh, and that's become big for us the last couple of years. If, you can, if you're making sufficient profits to pay your staff well and invest in your customer relationships, you've got to look at the environment. And then, and, and then the wider field, again, if things are going well, I think you've got to look at the country and perhaps the globe. And I think we all, we all owe it to, to society. I think if we're successful and profitable, which thankfully, touch wood, we are through careful growth, um, we decided to give a lot more back. Um, I, I've got enough to survive on. My future's secure. Uh, for me, it's giving something back. And what we found is that give us get. It's an old-fashioned phrase, give us gain. And it's not we're not doing it for that, but undoubtedly it's raised our credibility. It's raised awareness that for us. People don't care how much money you're making. People don't care you know, how big you are. They more care about what you're giving back, I think. And the millennial and snowflake generation who become the ever-increasing target market for decision makers, that's what they're looking for. And uh, although I'm an old guy, uh, my young staff that work for us, they keep reminding me of this and I haven't forgotten it. And undoubtedly, we're getting a lot of positive feedback from that. And what's well, funny Martin, is... Martin, we'll, we'll, we'll come on to the team in a moment because I want to ask sure. across the piece. But, but, I, but I, you know, I'm sure that point about millennials is, is, is well made. Mm. Uh, Evan, you, from your point of view, do you, do you support that argument that companies actually do have that social responsibility? Well, yeah, I, I haven't disagreed with anything I've heard. Uh, so far, I mean, we, we've got a different view on what social responsibility means, and it's actually in the core of what we do. Um, we don't have employees um, in our company, we just have team members. Uh, you join a team, you become part of a team, you are a team, flattish structure, um, and where people wear rank on their shoulders, they're effective, just have more responsibility, but they're not more important, okay? So that everybody that comes into the company fits, fits into a role that we need, and if you need it in that role, then you're important to the company. And, and if people feel important, they feel empowered, and if they feel empowered, they're going to do better for you as a whole. Um, but, but in terms of the way that we've looked at social responsibility, we, we, we are only here because other companies behaved in a socially responsible way and supported us through the genesis of what True Speed was. Uh, I'm going to put a shout out to one of them who's not here, but Thrings um, gave us, gave me three years of legal cover um, at all the risk to themselves whilst we were whilst we were getting going saying that you'll pay me back at some time won't you Evan? yes absolutely I will I have done by the way but that was 39 lawyers and a huge amount of money that was at risk from from that perspective okay so we wouldn't be here if they hadn't supported us and that that, that to me is being socially responsible uh, in, in, in a sense and it taught me quite a lot actually in terms of how I wanted to drive the the, the company that we that we that we've grown so um, we look after our team and um, they're very important to us and we invest as much of the money that we're spending in building our network in local companies so that the money stays in the local economy which is, which is another form of, uh, of that social responsibility on this um, thank you on this day of uh, being communitaire i'm sure tamsin from stone king wouldn't mind um, things being given a, a very good shout out i'm not quite sure what 39 lawyers are probably a disputation of lawyers but Tamsin, tell us, um, tell us about Stone King. You've got a, 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 a widely and rightly held national reputation for being uh, an exemplar of support for charities and their legal practices. And why, why does that actually matter to Stone King beyond the business, of course, that that brings in? It goes to our core values. Um, I mean, in, internally, you can imagine being lawyers, we have huge debates as to what social responsibility actually means for us. As, but, where we all agree is why it matters. We set out some time ago um, our core values. They are integral to the way we operate um, and the way we operate internally before we operate externally. Um, we're a people business. Um, we don't have um, widgets. We are entirely dependent on our staff and we are entirely dependent on doing business with people who think like us or more, put it the other way around, we are dependent on thinking like the people we do business with. Um, so core values to us is absolutely critical. Um, it means that we have better empathy 
um, or we might hope we have better empathy with our clients um, and therefore better able to help them deliver whatever their objective is. Um, social responsibility, broader than um, it used to be. Uh, it's, I'm a lawyer, I'm going to tie, tie um, up in knots with words, um, but increasingly it's ESG, environmental, social and governance issues. Um, and again, it's how one treats staff, how one treats clients, how one treats suppliers, um, where one can have respect for the environment and doing what you can to make the planet a better place. Okay, thank you. Can I bring in our, our charities uh, in, in whichever order, perhaps, uh, perhaps a comment on this point. Um, clearly money matters and support through money uh, from businesses really, really does matter in these current times. But why else does it matter that businesses in Bath get involved with our charities? Who'd like to comment? Philippa, perhaps. Yeah. Well, well, the charity, yes, we do need the funds. You're absolutely right. But we can't have any funds if nobody knows anything about the charity. Um, so an element is about raising awareness that the charity is there, the work that the charity does. And also, um, I, again, taking on from something sort of Matt Tamsin said about, you know, people need to know about what we do, not just from the point of view of raising money for us, but also about the services that we offer. So the more people that know about us, there's the ripple effect of that um, and, and, and the empathy. Um, and also, I think you've, you know, you've mentioned all the different ways than the sort of the, the, the flavours of um, corporate social responsibility and the tokenism has already been mentioned. And I've sort of experienced all different elements of that over the years. Um, but I do feel that now we are at a, at a sort of unique point in all of that. Um, and that's why today is absolutely brilliant, where we're sort of airing all of that and actually saying we have a clean slate here to sort of take what we've learned and to talk differently, whether that's together as we are now or individually. So, so Rosie and Penny, um, beyond money, beyond awareness, are there any other points you'd like to say about why businesses should get involved with charities if they aren't currently? Oh, I think, sorry, Penny, I'll just go. I, I think there's lots of reasons. And I think you said at the beginning, Greg, it's all about connection. And I think it's a comment that, you know, life's all about connection. And I think in COVID, that's become even more apparent. But so there is the connection of sort of people knowing you're there. Um, as a charity, DHI works with people who are marginalised and, and often disconnected. And I think raising awareness of those issues, um, you know, a lot of people... Um, just become more aware of those issues it reduces stigma and I think the company benefits as well through um, developing a kind of um, more awareness and almost kindness I think there's now a lot of research about how how kindness actually builds resilience and mental health so I think it's actually especially where you've got younger people in businesses now maybe more aware of that they want to get involved and it's that so it's that reaching out and that broader connection um, and also, I think uh, the other thing is the sort of pro bono skills. We've kind of moved beyond just giving money and just, not just, I don't mean just in the slightest, but we've moved beyond giving money and um, maybe having a team of people coming in and painting or something. And actually, companies are increasingly offering the skills that they actually really have honed and offering that to your organization so i mean we've benefited from that i'm going to say in covid particularly because that's obviously very obvious um from data shop if, if martin doesn't mind me saying because as soon as covid happened they were brilliant at getting in and being really supportive and speedy in getting our redirecting our phone lines getting video conferencing set up so we were actually able without sort of the skip, skip of a heartbeat, really, to be able to continue to provide services to some very vulnerable people. I'm, I'm sure that's what you're saying, and none of us should feel abashed when, when good work is being done, it, it is right to recognise. And, and just to pick up on your, your awareness point, it's almost like um, that point about, uh, there's, a, there's an awful lot of meanness out there, of, I don't know, racism, transphobia, homophobia, whatever it, it might be. But this is the other way around, the more normative it becomes, being seen to be good, supportive, decent, engaged, involved, and so on, 
the more it will encourage other people. And in fact, it'll become a demand, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Penny, let's, uh, let's pick up that point. What, what, what else, why else might businesses get involved with charities? What, what else are you looking for? Well, well I think what, what's been particularly important to Southside is not just knowing what we do, but how we do it. And the value of lived expertise, over 50% of the people that work for us were service users. All of them are local people. And I think understanding that, which, you know, it's quite a radical way of working and, and, you know, can be risky. But I think also that, you know, in, in, in an area like Bath, um, we, we work right in the middle of Twerton. And um, we ha actually have two areas in the 10% most deprived areas in England, Twerton West and Whiteway, which is pretty shocking. So I, I think, you know, like, like you, you've all said, I'm at the moment, and like Rosie said, you know, during the, the pandemic, it has been more challenging, but more surprising as well with the sort of, um, the, the support we've had like Wessex Water, they've cooked 100 meals for the Twerton and Whiteway community daily. They've had to go back to business as usual. But the relationship we've, we've got with them now has, has it's, it's amazing and, and I think you know it's something about the way we all work together and actually seeing what they got out of it got out of doing it um the individual um I mean lots of people I could mention but you know that they've we, raised funds to work. Give, give them a shout out you know if companies... yeah, individual blimmin marvelous um yeah. practical support but but just something maybe like like Rosie said as well you know the kindness something very kind about the way they've supported us and and let because sometimes you know you get on with a job and you don't really you, you don't always feel sort of you're, you're doing as well as you'd like to it, it's pretty uphill work but but certainly, you know, the individual, amazing. Marketing, amazing, the support there. Mowbray Woodwards, who I know are part of Stone King now. We were a charity of the year. It is, it's very humbling and, and it's very supportive. So, and I could, you know, tell you lot, lots more, but, and I've been doing this for 30 years, this work, and, and um, they've actually given me a caseload. So I actually see, like, Bath Ball, um, we, we got £2,000 funding towards our domestic abuse service. I've seen the people that have benefited from that in a practical way, in, in an emotional way. So it's, um, yeah, pretty good stuff. So I, I feel quite positive. Well, that, that's encouraging. It's almost as though, you know, there's, there's various paradoxes of the pandemic. One is that we've never been further apart, but we're closer still. Yeah. Uh, we're having more contact in some ways than ever previously. But the other is in a time of great pause, also a time of great acceleration trends which are there are being sped up the points of connection and and kindness and relationships even i'd like to come back to um the businesses to ask this more, more general question can you actually discern benefits internally first and then come on to external let's go internally on having a, a thoughtful ethical socially responsible approach what, what are the benefits internally um, if, if I can jump in there, I, I remember having a conversation probably a decade ago now with um, Professor Eric Thomas from the University of Bristol, um, a, a genius in my eyes uh, around managing an organisation. And he, he basically said his, his only job in that huge organisation was to recruit the best and retain the best. And he was talking about his, his, his staff. But it's for us, I've taken that through everything. So we're finding now that um, you know a successful business is derived from its people I believe so you get the best people and you're if you're able to keep the best people then you're probably going to do well I then flip that on to clients as well retaining the best clients and recruiting the best clients is really important as well and that comes back to the stuff we were talking about earlier about you know working with people that are have got sort of collective ideals um, so for us Far more people that we um, look to recruit are talking about what we do outside of the business. You know, we get a lot more younger recruits in and that it is a, it's something they ask us. You know, they want to be working for a business that they are proud to work for. I remember in my very early days, 20 years ago, of financial planning, when someone asked you what you did for a living, you sort of took a breath of this, well, shall I tell them I'm a financial advisor or not? You know, because it had a sort of stigma around it. Um, but I feel now that people, staff, when you're recruiting them, you want people to be proud to say who they work for. You know, and that's not just about being a successful business in the business you're in, the industry you're in, but the impact you have more, more widely. So it is about um, recruiting the best and retaining the best. 
but it's also around the, the real impact to us is widening our networks. You can, when you're doing business development, you, you start with the low hanging fruit and that's the environment you're, you know, you know, it's the stuff you know, but actually this sort of charitable giving and the corporate social responsibility, it just exposes your, your business to such a wide range of people and a wide range of opportunities. Um, it, it, it just enables you to build your business in, in a completely different way. So it feels, you know, that, that's the bit around how do you become a successful business, but actually that engagement allows you to be a successful business. Good, thank you. Evan, um, from your point of view, you've touched on this already, but talk about um, when, I mean, how, how many people do you employ and talk about the, the recruitment process and how relevant or, or, you know, invisible the corporate social responsibility is to that recruitment process. So I'd love to give you an exact number, Greg, but I can't. Because I, I, I haven't kept up with it. It's we, we during lockdown have actually expanded by about thirty five percent so far. Um, I don't know about 140, 145 people at the moment, and, and and getting bigger. And one of the key tenants to recruiting and and for us now it has, wasn't in the in the beginning because we couldn't do it in the beginning, but now it's about wanting people to want to come and work with the team. Uh, and, I, and I use the word team again. It says, do you want to come and join a, a brilliant team of people doing fantastic work? And the answer is, well, it, first you probably do because you've applied for the, for the role, but actually, why do you want to come here? Uh, and it's being able to then really get the pick of the people that are, are out there because we want this, the, 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 the true brilliance of what we're doing to be inside of the people coming out as, as they walk around and be proud to work for True Speed and to wear the badge on the t-shirt and the hat whenever they're out and about and say yeah I do work for that and it has paid, paid big dividends especially in the market where we are competing now for some key skills um, we are actually able to still keep recruiting in, in areas where others are finding it difficult because but could, I, could I just press this point how significant is the social responsibility to that recruitment process it's, it's all part of it's all part of the whole thing Greg it's not it's not just a tick boxing exercise it's not it's this is what i was trying to say in the beginning it's it it isn't something which is we don't have a policy that, that we call it it is just who we are so we want to behave and we do behave well so we treat our contractors properly we treat our suppliers properly we pay our bills on time we have good relationships with everybody we we're community based so we we try and have very good relationships with the communities and we do work with charities and the teams are always coming to me with, with ideas on what they want to do and how they want to do it, how they want to support things. You know, recently, and it's a really small thing here, but we, we, we had a, a giveaway of, 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 gift, of, of items from all the companies that, that, that wanted it. But we bought all the things from the companies. We didn't ask them to give it to us. In, in other words, it's, we're not asking for stuff. We want to help and we want to do things with people. And so what, what, what team means is people work together and they want to be friends together. And when you start getting that relationship going at work, because people spend a lot of time with each other at work and you get that relationship going at work, then all the other benefits of, well, how do we go? Well, why don't we go run the marathon looking like a chicken? Or why don't we do all these other things that we, we can do? Not because of a true speed, but because actually we're friends at work and we can do stuff together. And, and, and Martin, um, social responsibility matters yet more to millennials, perhaps, than the preceding era? Yeah, I think so. Um, I've had to adapt how I, how I see things. Um, and it's been glaringly obvious to me that people just don't want a job and money. They want, they want to work for an ethical business that they know is honest and straightforward. They look after the customers, they look after the staff, they pay the suppliers on time, like Evan just said. And they're, they're run with a, you know, a, a fair policy at the mind. So typically, what's funny is that two of your panel are actually of our customers, Stone King and uh, DHI. We're very proud to be working with both of them. And I think we're working with about 40% of the top 100 clients in Bath, and we want to increase that. And that isn't an accident for a small business. We punch way above our weight. It's because we really do commit to this. Uh, I think a lot of our customers who work with us for a while will know our staff are happy, they feel invested in, and they're developed, and they feel secure. And that, that sort of transcends a lot of normal business practice, I think. A lot of a lot of cliches are out there um, and one of those things we, you know, we're very proud to be working with with quite a few law firms now including Stone King who are growing and we've just heard but also with DHI it's, they share a 20th anniversary with us this year we're in our 20th year um, they recently became a customer of ours I'm in the middle of rolling out some communications and like Rosie said when COVID hit they needed some extra help so we, we prioritize them over traditional businesses um, because the impact I think is a lot larger uh, to people's lives rather than just business and bottom lines so um, 
if I can just give it a, a little um, a little plug, really, because Rosie plugged us. Thank you, Rosie. Um, they're trying to raise £35,000 for a liver scanner, and we, we are, as a chosen partner this year, we're going to work really hard with them to raise as much of that money, if not all of it, as soon as we can. Um, it's dear to my heart. I'm an ex-military family man. I've, I've known people that have suffered from drug abuse and uh, alcohol abuse and passed away and what damage it has to the family. And that, and that. So for us, we really are behind it. And me as the business owner, I said earlier on, that I own the business. Uh, I'm trying to drive that through all the staff and people who meet us, uh, customers, uh, new staff members, recruits, they seem to like that and they realize that it's genuine and they want to be part of it. It's, it's, it's way above what salary they get. They can see that we're going to be around for a long time and continue to do that. So I think the business ethics is, is shining through now because before it wasn't on anybody's tick list. I think staff in particular and certainly more customers, they want to know you're an ethical, honest business. And I think the CSR bit and put your money where your mouth is, we're doing that with Rosie and her team. Um, it's the third charity we worked with for the last 10 years. We've done Rally for Heroes stuff, which is um, stuff with Jesse May, uh, 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 Cerebral Palsy Charity. And this is because we had personal experience, either through staff members or myself. And there's an old fr phrase, isn't there? Charity begins at home. Um, I also think business begins at home too. So we're working recruit locally and sell locally. And I'm, I'm amazed with the work that Greg and his team are doing. It's, uh, it's really taking off and people know who we are a bit more now. And it seems to be more fun doing business. Because it's you know you, you see people and you smile at them and there's no well, watch out it's duck from that person's face. You can hold your head high locally, and I think it's just good for culture locally and nationally probably, and everybody benefits. I think it helps society generally in many many facets, and I didn't realise that until a couple of years ago, and it's uh, in a quite strong part of my business growth now. That's really good. Well, you know you might as well enjoy it, whatever the issue is, whether it's business or charity. But Tamsin, so we've heard a this peroration about uh, the only way is ethics, effectively. Um, does that apply also to those those graduates who've, who've, who've struggled to do their law degrees? They, they're looking for the right uh, law company to join. Um, is that sense, are those sense of ethics really high on their list or do they simply want to join a great legal practice? I'm not asking you to uh, bang the drum for, for Stone King necessarily, but it's more about the principle. Does it matter? Of course it matters. Um, it, it, it's essential. And I would argue and always have argued it's essential for any lawyer um, to have a very strong sense of ethics. And I don't just mean professional ethics. Um, for Stone King, even more so, um, it's because which comes first? Do we do the sort of work we do because we are the sort of people we are or have we become the sort of people because of that sort of work? I think the whole thing is bound up together. Um, ethics is essential for our recruits. They come looking um, to us um, to maintain that. The basic skill in law is essential. We can help them um, develop that. Uh, and going back to what Martin was saying earlier, if you've got happy people, you will have better productivity. They will, in our case, they will think um, more about the client's issues, how they can help, how they can develop. So yes, ethics, not just professional ethics, how you conduct yourself professionally and personally, what is important to you, is goes to the core of everything that we do. Well, everyone is, um, is, is playing nicely and, uh, and being very communitaire and singing to the same hymn sheet and so on. I'm now going to, as is my want, uh, chuck a rock into this uh, smooth pool with two quotes. One is from uh, Margaret Thatcher. When asked about the parable of the Good Samaritan, she said, yes, the real meaning of the Good Samaritan is that he had wealth. That's why he was able to do good. And there's a quote that Daniel Defoe, I think he wrote this in, when he was in Bath and he wrote Mole Flanders. Uh, he said, uh, in Mole's character, give me not poverty lest I steal. The two points come together. Isn't it the case that you can only do good if you're actually successful? Is that true? Anyone? No, no. no I don't think yeah. so. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's a penny first. Okay, so just thinking about uh, an email I've had today, a young woman who's been through the most horrific uh, domestic abuse has come through and has is raising some money, not a lot, because it's her birthday today. And that is really, truly giving back. She does not have two pennies, excuse the pun, to rub together. But she wants to thank us for our support. And now she's coming through. She's a volunteer with us. 
um, she's making a difference for more people that have gone through the sort of thing that she had. So I think she hasn't got anything. But what, what she, what, if she gives £150, that's a fortune to her. So not necessarily. Yeah, I think from a... Sorry, can I, can I um, just talk a little bit about um, brewing on that? Uh, when, when we when we started with Brewing Dolphin, I sort of went in there expecting them to have a massive charity, you know, a, a giving department. Everything was done from the core. What came out really, really quickly that all the all the work was done at the branches and done by individuals at the branches. And although we're we're a finance company, and the general feeling is that people that work in the finance industry are well paid, there's a huge amount of administrators who have. You know, fairly modest incomes, but the vast majority of the the social giving and the social the, the work is not about them giving their money away. It's giving their time, and there's a huge amount that they they do. And it's um, and you couldn't call them you know wealthy individuals. They they just get on and do it. And I think if we did a full analysis, the vast majority of the the charitable giving, whether it be time or money or skills or whatever, are done by um, by a lot of the sort of administrators in a business. You know, it's lent a lot of um, uh, assistance from the core, from HQ, um, but the vast majority of the work is done by the individuals. Um, the one last thing I'd like to say, based on the, the, the thing about staff earlier, is I came to the realisation a few years ago now, um, but actually all staff are volunteers. You know, they're paid volunteers, but they're still volunteers. They, they will choose to work for you or not work for you. Mm -hmm. uh, they will have different motivations. Some of them will be financial, um, but they are still volunteers. Um, so... You know, those that are looking to have work for a company that they feel has got strong values that they agree with, they will then volunteer to work for you. And, you know, we, we pay people well, but we find them going above and beyond. Um, and if they're just simply motivated by money, they wouldn't be doing that. So, you know, for me, employees are volunteers. Get the best volunteers you, you, you possibly can. Right. Can I, can I just... Sorry, can I just say something about that? Because uh, I think that sees success and failure in a very black and white, simplistic way. Far be it for me to criticise Margaret Thatcher. But, um, you know, we have people come through our doors at DHI who have been successful. Sometimes the success and the pressure may lead to problems with alcohol. Uh, sometimes divorce, relationship breakdown is often a trigger point for people to, uh, for their lives to unravel. I don't want to say, but for the grace of God, go I, we're all kind of just one skip away from disaster. But, you know, we don't live this kind of well, I certainly haven't, a sort of upward trajectory to, to sort of stardom in our lives. Life has its ups and downs. And I think part of corporate social responsibility and that greater mm -hmm. awareness is getting a bit more um, empathy and sophisticated understanding of life. And it's not all, you know, uh, what the, how the media present it. Um, and we work with a lot of ex-military as well. You know, people who've been wonderful and wonderfully successful one moment and then and then they leave the military and they they are vastly overrepresented in our sort of client group with sort of struggling to readjust so and i think the other point i would make is um i many years ago uh when i actually worked in a pr company before i worked for charity i did some bucket collecting and it was always the women with five shopping bags and a few kids around them that were like really generous at giving so they, they didn't look particularly wealthy and the other thing is we have a lot of our service users want to give back and um, they, they help those within the organisation and often it's the biggest inspiration for somebody who's perhaps early in recovery from maybe a drug or alcohol problem to work with somebody else who's been there and is maybe a bit further down the line. So, um, yeah, life, life is complex. Life is complex. It's certainly not a, a graph that begins at the bottom left and goes to the top right, and that's deemed to be success. That that is for sure. And um, uh, Rosie, I suspect you may know this, but just because I quote people doesn't necessarily mean I, I endorse them. <laughs> <laughs> you might think that I couldn't possibly comment. Um, any any other observations in this this area? Yeah, Evan. I, I'm, I'm going to be slightly controversial here because it sort of goes against the grain of what we've been talking about in 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 how we've been talking about it, but it doesn't disagree with anything that we've said. God, politician in the making man. Um, <laughs> the, the, the key here is about social responsibility. Isn't about, I, you know, forgive me, about having a policy. 
it is about having an ethos. It's about having a personality around how you behave and what you do. Um, I, I am ex-military as well. And I, I think it probably comes that I'm uh, drawing on that experience of us. When you set up something and you become the leader of it, and then more and more people come in and they look to you as the leader of that group, it's, it's profound the amount of influence you have over their behavior. Um, and we should absolutely promote this back into business leadership, which is what, what you talk about. It's what is it that you do? How is it you behave? How do people look to you? I've not had one person out of the 140 or so come to me and ask me what our social responsibility process is. Okay, they, they, they may think it or they may feel it, but they've not asked about it. And I've got a diverse group of, of, of teammates in, in the company. So what, what, what we've got to do is know that these people who work for you, you can change how they behave in society overall by being kind, as you say, by showing kindness, by not always being harsh about things that don't go well and looking at ways of making things better, um, helping the whole process, making a company that doesn't treat everybody as just a bottom line number. What I mean by that is when companies are in difficulties during COVID, we haven't cut them off, okay, et cetera. And, and it's having a bunch of processes that are like that. When people look to you and they've come to you from other industries with my, it may have been harsher and you say, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. It sets a tone. And once that tone is set, the ship sails in the right direction and people behave differently uh, in, the, in, the, in their off time. And it's about being community leaders, if I want to call it that one, and by, by being that and standing at all around these ideals that you have, um, you actually do make a big difference across a wider portion of what and where you go. I'll give you an example of, you know, we have guys who dig the roads for us, you know, the most hated people on the planet because they keep people from in, in traffic jams, but they're delivering fantastic things. Uh, normally you get quite a lot of churn with people like, because they jump from job to job and go for the money. We, in four and a half years of using our in-house teams, haven't had anybody leave us. All right, so it's because they want to work for Truesby because they get invited to the Christmas party. They get spoken to by the CEO uh, regularly around what they're doing. They get listened to and they're important. And if you do more of that across the whole, it doesn't matter whether you're a small company or a massive company, but the company has to behave that way internally. And then you'll have a profound effect on, on society as a whole, not just have to listen to the banal rubbish that's being reported in the press all the time. Let's, um, let's pick up that point about the external in a moment. Uh, the basic underlying point there is do good things and good things will happen. I just put prior to that, I want to bring in uh, Christopher Johns to ask the question, are any of the panelists uh, B Corp accredited? Uh, and perhaps those, uh, someone who might know a little bit more than I do, may, maybe uh, Tamsin may be more familiar with the B Corp structure. Or are they considering becoming so? And do they see this as a useful way of demonstrating CSR in a practical and structured way? Samson, are you able just to give a, a, a nutshell on, on B Corp? Um, not as much as I should. It's something that we um, keep looking at um, and have done since they were first um, introduced. Um, I think my personal concern, I stress this is the personal concern, is it's, it's another tick box exercise. Um, and which uh, I would rather I would rather avoid tick box exercising rather than B corps. Essentially, it's a sort of a kite mark. Um, there are various criteria to be satisfied to demonstrate that you are um, a B corp and that you um, can show that you are socially responsible. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have the, the particular criteria here. Um, as I say, we've thought about it, but certainly at the moment we've decided not to go for it. Just to pick up that point, we had, we had a session with, uh, with Creative Bath, a sort of separate area uh, that uh, we're, we're involved with, uh, where there was an exponent of B Corps, and there is, it's essentially, it is a kite mark, but it's an incredibly detailed process of checking all aspects of the value chain and how a company behaves, um, such that you get an international... Uh, re recognition of being uh, an ethical company. It, it, it looks extremely onerous and thereby I guess it has greater validity. Has anyone um, encountered B Corps and considered that as a, 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 an interesting route for their business? No? Okay, that's... No, it's, it's not, for, for Bruin, it, no, it's, it's not on my radar. It's not, um, we, we have a lot of the sustainability stuff, the ESG policy is sort of run from the core with the, the, the more social stuff being driven down to the branches. Uh, funny enough, we have a new head of sustainability, a guy called Tom Blaithwaite, and he's actually going to be moving to Bath 
Um, so, so I'm going to make some uh, some inroads with him when he gets here to, to try and introduce him to this to this group certainly, um, because I'm sure there are some th some things around around B Corps or similar uh, that he would know and have an opinion on. So it would be great to bring him into the mix at some point in the not too distant future. Well, one of the mixes, Richard, is of course when uh, the Barthlife Business Club returns in real life, which uh, yeah, absolutely. We suspect at this stage will be is more likely to be January onwards. Uh, the lunch will be held at the Royal Crescent, again, uh, sponsored by Motors Group. But um, we're interested well, in discussing these sorts of matters with very interesting people. So that sounds uh, appropriate. Yeah, he's, yeah he, he's definitely someone we will get in the mix there. Good. Um, I'd li like to come back to this external point for the businesses. Um, are your suppliers, customers, clients, however defined, um, seeing this as an important not a, a tick box, but an important element of your offering such that they will place business with you more readily if you are deemed to be uh, uh, socially responsible, or is that just simply not on most people's radars? Just I don't mind uh, okay. answering that one. Um, for me, it's be, there's nothing there years ago, very, very rare, but I think people have got on the bandwagon, and I say that in a good way, because they realize that it elevates their own credibility in the marketplace amongst their staff and customers. And I think there's a lot more coming into requirements now beyond just technology or financial compliance. And uh, that's a great thing. So I think this thing just needs momentum. The more companies that invest in this, not just the CSR, but the, the ethic, business ethics and also the environment, the more they recruit better staff, you're going to get better staff who buy into that and you're going to get more commitment. For us, a relationship with business is about trust. And trust goes beyond about, I trust you to deliver it on time. It goes into, I trust you to be a good partner look after your staff, look after us, look after the environment. And like I said earlier on, the, the new generation that's coming through, this is their language. And so we need more momentum. And I think that I get long-term change, but it's not happening quickly, but I think it'll happen eventually. Could I ask th this point, um, per perhaps narrow the point down. When it comes to working with um, public sector, uh, councils, national bodies, uh, uh, NHS, whatever, companies have to demonstrate their, their, their CSR, their ethical approach, their um, uh, whatever the sort of policies are, and it's legion. Do you think that will ever happen in private businesses that they, you know, your clients or customers will require you to prove, not just be, but to prove you actually do have this underpinning of ethics? Well, I, I'll, I'll go into that one. I, I don't think we're going to require, I mean, our clients are individual people um, and we provide telecommunications in a world where companies in the whole are paid pretty badly anyway. So their expectations of what a company is in our sector is, is pretty much anchored on, on bad, bad ways of doing business, if that makes sense. Perhaps not ethical, but just in general terms of not delivering what they paid for. So, um, you know, I don't think our customers are going to want to see our CSR policy when buying a, a connection to a true speed fiber. Um, our contractors and our suppliers um, want to know that we behave well in, in relation to treating our contractors and the suppliers well. And, you know, there have been mutual support given to both suppliers at times and, and contractors um, and it's all worked well. So no, I don't think they're going to check on that. They're just going to know you've got a good reputation in the, in the industry and, and that's what's going to carry you do, for us do, anyway. Do, do our other panellists agree with that? Yeah, I, I think so. I think um, we've had conversations for many years from clients and our clients in the main are private individuals. Um, but the, the, the focus point for them has been this discussion about ethical investment. So a quite a quite a narrow thing, you know. Um, you know, can we invest ethically? It is, it is hugely difficult to be absolutely greener than green when you come to ethical investment. But that that space has moved on massively. So we get clients asking all the time about ethical investment, and that's effectively where you're placing their funds. Um, so I think the the conversation about the wider CSR isn't quite on their radars yet. I think the ethical bit was the was the first bit. If you take um, the long arc of justice, as, uh, as it's been called, um, from where charitable uh, endeavour was and where it is now, it is possible that over time, that arc of checking on supply chains, on ethical approach and so on, will become more prevalent and will actually be sort of baked into to contracts in subsequent times. Uh, I guess we're, you know, we're, we're not at that stage, but it may well be that stage subsequently. I'd like to come back to our, our charities and ask you this on a, a personal human level, what does it mean for you and your teams to know that you have the backing of Bath businesses? I go, I'll start on that one. Well, I would 
actually was something that Evan said a little while ago about um, the, the team there. They're very much a team at True Speed. And I would say that any partnership with a charity, I would regard it as, a, as being a team together um, and not an us and them and being totally, that would be how it would, we would bring it all together to work very closely. Um, and I think, you know, having worked at Dorothy Ash for a number of years and been involved with the Bath Bulls over a period of time, I think we sometimes forget um, some of the great work that does go on in, in Bath and rightly at the moment we're in a, able by this pause to sort of celebrate that and think about what goes on and how we can develop that further um, to accelerate using one of um, Greg's, um, stealing from Greg. Um, I mean the Bath Bull, if you just look at it simply, it's bringing Bath businesses together who might not have the time or the energy or really know how to get involved with charities. Um, a team, you know, has organised that for them, so it's very, very simple for them to get involved. Then on the day itself, the charities are able to interact with these companies that, again, they couldn't possibly get around and do all of this networking, otherwise they would do nothing else during the year. Um, and also it brings in the, the, the people of Bath as well, especially now with the road closes, it's very much a sort of festival and it's there for everybody to see. Um, and I, you know, I really hope it all goes well on Thursday night with the, the virtual incarnation. We've all had to adapt. Um, and really, you know, I just want to say thank you to all of those who do participate at the various level of sponsorship in this time giving raffle prizes and actually just thinking about it differently and being prepared to give that time to think. Really good, Philippa. That, that's much appreciated. If I, if I could come to, to Penny, yes, to talk about the, the personal aspect of knowing that you, you your organisation, has the backing of Bath businesses. Well, well, I think it, it makes us feel very proud and part of a larger community. We are a bit up on the hill in Twerton. And it's interesting, I, I didn't know this about Rosie, but I was also in public relations before I came down to Bath. Uh, lost my soul. I've now got it back, I think. <laughs> but um, we, we did tend to sort of get on with the job, uh, you know, knuckle down and get on with it. And I think it's broadened our horizons again. And um, yes, I, th I think it's been very important for everyone to, to, to know that. And we certainly let them know about it. And, uh, you know, get, getting charity of the year, I mean, that was utterly amazing with Bath City Farm. Suddenly we were part of this massive community um, so it's been very important, very important. You're good. And, and Rosie, um, from, from that personal point of view, when you, when you look out on Bath and you, you sometimes, I'm sure, feel, uh, you know, your, your work is so important and so complex and so demanding, but to have that support, what does it mean to you? I think it's, it's being part of the fabric of the local community. Um, I, I, yeah, being valued, being, being part of the community and... Um, and, and, and those connections, they are all so invaluable. I mean, uh, I just briefly want to touch on connections we've made through Bath Life and Epoch or um, Bruin and Dolphin. Now we met at a Bath Life event and they, they've sponsored, uh, they sponsored a conference for families and carers. Nationwide in Bath do a lot of the homeless and have supported us. Touchstone. Um, and, and, and you yourself hosted a conference for young people last year, which was brilliant. And from that, we've got a uh, 50,000, not from that directly, but indirectly, a 50,000 pound grant to take forward some of our young people's drug alcohol work. So, you know, it is, it makes you feel good, but it, it, also, it also enables you to do your, what you're, you're there to do better. Well, it it's all very kind, we're all very nice to each other, and um, it's much <laughs> I just had a, a question from uh, John Canton, um, who is actually for, for us at Bath Life, who says, um, speaking as a first time attendee with expertise in sustainability, um, he's wondering how, how the panel would feel about at least some of the future meetings remaining on Zoom, as it enables a much larger form of viewers, mm -hmm. potentially customers, clients, and so on, and contributors to engage. Um, we are uh, very, very happy to do that because it seems to us the combination of the in real life events uh, as well as the virtual events. Virtual events have the advantage of, of reach. In real life has uh, a deeper connection, potentially at least. Uh, so, so John, uh, we will definitely in some way have these virtual events, which links very, very subtly to a little virtual event we're doing this Thursday called Bath Bulls Aid. Oh, God, wasn't that uh, unsubtle? <laughs> anyway, um, I, I would like to, to ask uh, all of you in different ways. Um, I mean, Stone King, we've, we've heard from Penny about 
uh, being uh, the charity of the year at the Bath Life Awards. And Stone King are, of course, the, the sponsor of that. And I'll just ask Tamsin why that actually matters. And I'm not looking for anything about Bath Life Awards itself. I'm talking about why it matters, that association with charities. Sense of community. Um, it's not even giving back. It's giving. It's part of the fabric of life, which is important to us. Um, there's been a lot of talk about kindness. Um, I think more important to me is the world is made up of individuals. And this is a way of participating in that, um, communicating with individuals and being part of their lives. Okay, thank you. I want to, want to come back to, to Bath Bulls and Bulls Aid. Um, I want to talk uh, with, with Richard uh, about Bruin Dolphin because uh, from our point of view, having uh, Epoch team as well as Bruin Dolphin as is, as our headline sponsors of what was meant to be the Bath Bull, was, um, was an incredible accolade. We were, were very proud of that. But if anything, I have to say, uh, and this isn't meant to be fawning, um, well, no, it isn't. <laughs> um, Go on. We're actually, we're actually more proud that you are standing behind the virtual event and that the, the head, headquarters or whatever team have backed that. Um, so if you could just, um, you know, whilst it may have been never in doubt and so on, can you just talk through why Bruin Dolphin are involved with the bull and how it was at the Epoch as was the, the head office, uh, a new team and so on to back it? Yeah. Um, Bruin Dolphin have been very, uh, as I've said all along, they're, 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 they recognise that stuff gets done at a very local level. Um, they don't feel, they're, they're quite... Um, they're a good senior management team who recognise that they can't just dictate everything from the from HQ. They know that things get done at a local level, um, and therefore they've been supportive of pretty much every every branch. Um, on a purely commercial basis, they recognise that Bath is a new is a new space for them, quite an exciting space for them. They've got an office in Bristol as well, um, and this seemed like a like a great sort of commercial opportunity to say Bruin is now in Bath and you can't knock them for that. Um, but fundamentally they were saying, look, you've developed a network and relationships in Bath. We do not want to destroy that simply by a name change. Um, so let's, let's just keep that momentum going. Um, and they, they absolutely recognize that the power is right down at the ground level. It's not just throwing money around at HQ level. Um, so, you know, it was never, it was absolutely never in doubt. We never had to, you know, we never had to beg them to support it. It was, it was one of the very, very early conversations we had. Now for us here, it's this whole collective ideals. It's the, it's the power of the many. Um, it's broadening that, that network. Um, but from a commercial perspective, Bruin Dolphin don't want to cut off any business opportunities for us. Um, and we don't want to cut off the ability to understand different stakeholders in Bath. So it was a, it was a no brainer and we really didn't have to fight very hard to keep that support. So that's great. Well, well, well played the Bruin Dolphins and uh, Epoch as was. So good for business, good for relationships, good for charities. Is there any other reason why perhaps uh, uh, Dave Sharp or True Speed would wish to, to say why they're back in the bull as well, Martin? Yes, thank you, Greg. Um, we've, we were, as you know, Greg, thanks for your help with the uh, platinum sponsors for Bath, Bristol Life and more recently Bath Life. Uh, it was a fantastic event, which had a great um, advert, open advert locally for the local good, do gooders and charities. I think business is coming on board with that now. But um, for me, it's like a human need, isn't it? You want food, water, money, housing. But I think the great feeling of doing good is a human nature thing. If we can afford to have it evolving and becoming, you know, sentient beings, you know, we're making money and making investments. I think people want more than that. They want to feel good about themselves. One way of feeling good about yourself is doing some good. And I think what you're doing with Bulls Aid and other charities and what we're doing with, with our customers who are also big givers like Tamsin's business, it, it, it does feel good and it makes business fun and it makes business more enjoyable for everybody and, and the engagement you have with customers, staff and partners. It's what we're all here for, isn't it? Ready to enjoy our time on the planet. So well done to everybody who's working so hard in the charities and also the businesses locally that get stuck in and put their heart on the sleeve, if you like, put their money where their mouth is. It, I think it's having a big impact. I mean, a little plug for Rosie, really. We just had our local giving page, um, with Bitly. I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's bit.ly ly slash liver scanner to help raise this 35 grand for um, Rosie's charity. So, yeah, let's all do it. Let's just a little company doing it. We're a small company with a small customer base, but let's everybody do it. You've all, if you turn over more and you make more profit, get stuck in and give. 
because it's, it's not that difficult and it feels bloody good. Get stuck in and give. It's not that difficult and it feels bloody good. Evan, further thoughts, but, uh, possibly for True Speak, but also about why other Bath businesses should get involved uh, with charities generally and perhaps Bulls Aid specifically. Uh, well, I mean, Bulls Aid for us was, was a no-brainer. You, you, you rang me up and said, Evan, you're going to carry on sponsoring. I said, yes. You know, it was as easy as that. It wasn't, didn't take very long, did it? No, it um, no. So, because, you know, the, the commitment was there from the first place, why would you take it away? You know, for, I mean, just literally, it would be stupid and, and churlish. Um, but we, we, you know, we, we have a budget for supporting charity, which we, which we use. And, and we do that not just to have a tick in the box, look at what we're doing, but because it's important. Um, we won the, the Bath Your, Your Competitors Award last year too. And, you know, that was in aid of homeless people in the, in the city. And that raised a bunch of money for uh, a, a charity there. And in fact, homelessness for me is, is a massive issue. Um, and I, you know, that, that, that's the, when, whenever we do anything, we, we really focus it in towards, towards that because we live in a world where people should not be homeless. Okay, I, mean, I just cannot fathom that, that, we, that that happens here and it's sustained and it's a long-term piece. So anyway, get off that, that bandwagon. Um, yeah, no, the reason we, we carry on with Bath Bull, one is because it's fun, two, it's because you asked me and three because um you know we've committed the money and therefore what else are we going to spend it on good man good man i've got one last question we are, we are over time but i do want to get this this last one in it's to our charities um if you give perhaps a, a one sentence pitch if possible uh, from you each what do you want those who are listening to this to do as a result of this session what do you want from bath businesses and organizations who'd like to go first very briefly one sentence okay yeah penny okay um, to support us financially and otherwise and continue to do that more, do it more, sorry, there's more in one sentence, isn't it? There's greater, greater need since COVID and funding is precarious, as you've said. We need help desperately, otherwise we will fold. You, you'd need help. Uh, Rosie? Um, your community, be part of your community and that, that's, that's all of your community, including those maybe left behind. Very good. And Philippa? Be curious, get in touch. You don't have to have the perfect idea of how you want to get involved. Let's just talk and do something wonderful together. Let's talk and do one, something wonderful together. I hope it, in its very modest minor way, this session has, has been a part of that. I would like to end by thanking our panelists, each of them, uh, Richard Barrington from Bruin Dolphin, Tamton Eastwood, Stone mm -hmm. King, Philippa Watson, Dorothy House, Martin Buckland, Data Sharp, Rosie Phillips, DHI, Evan Weinberg, True Speed, and Penny McKissick from Southside. To you all, thank you very much for your time today. Also for the questions that we've had and to Moja Stroop for sponsoring. Look out for our next Bath Life Business Surgery with Univigil on August 3rd and with Ojo Solutions on August 17th. Please, please join us for Bulls Aid uh, this Thursday from 7.30 to, to 9 p.m. Uh, we will have food that you can buy via Pixie and a percentage of that, uh, food and drink, Essentially, that goes to charities. We'll have donation buttons. We'll have uh, not quite the live aid, Bob Geldof swearing and shouting and so on about why you should donate. But we are very, very, very keen for people to donate. You've heard some extraordinary uh, indicators today of how businesses are supporting. And we're very, very grateful for that. But also, I think more particularly, the need of charities in these times to have the benefit of your connections and money. Please, uh, overall, uh, good luck and good wisdom to all of us. This has been the Media Clash production, and this has been the Bath Life Business Club. Thank you. Bath together and Bulls Aid on Thursday. Thank Yay. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.